Before we get started with Particle Shop, I want to talk a little bit about the menu structure. The actual brush display in Particle Shop is going to be truncated, and so I want to show you what the full list looks like, which you'll probably see with no problem on your larger display. Secondly, I want to talk about the names. You can see what happens in Particle Shop is these names are going to get truncated. You're not going to see the full name. Over here, I'm showing you what those full names are. Secondly, I want to show you that this blue coloration indicates that these are brushes that blend color. They don't apply color. The one exception is smear paint, and you can see over here in the actual list that it shows a little color. That's because it does start off with color, but then it tapers off to just picking up color and the brushes that are displayed as black actually apply color. And the other thing I want to show you here is I'm going to turn this little overlay on. You'll see that some of these brushes have the same starting name. In this case, we've got Harry Blend and Harry Stroke. Anytime a brush starts with the first name, and I've, I've isolated them by color boxes, here, that means those brushes are the same brush, but they will behave somewhat differently. So you can see the Harry Blend is a brush that's not going to apply color, but it's going to use the same brush qualities as you're going to get in the Harry Stroke brush, which does apply color. So particularly in the case of this sketch brush, you've got three different versions of it that you can use two of them will apply color and one is going to only blend color. There is some information available just in the way these are colored within the actual particle shop display when we open it up, but as I said, you'll see some of these names, you can't read all of them, and that's just a condition of the way particle shop works. Let's go ahead now and take a look at particle shop. I've got it installed as a panel here in Photoshop CC. I'm going to duplicate the active layer, which right now is simply the background. So let's go ahead and launch Particle Shop. Here we are, and I've got my color palette. I like to keep it pinned right here over this area of the other packs, and that way I can concentrate on my painting and keep my color palette right close at hand. As I mentioned earlier, you can see how this is truncated. Because I'm working on a lower resolution screen, uh, I can't open this up all the way to see all of the brushes at once. So I do have to navigate through here. The other thing is you can see many of these brushes, the name is too long to see the whole name. So you'll have to get by memorizing or getting used to where these are within this layout. Let's go ahead and try a few of these out. I'm going to start with the dripper brush. And as you can see, this just applies random splatters of paint, much in the spirit of Jackson Pollock, a uh, 50s abstract expressionist painter. Gouache is another one. And I'm not going to try to do anything right now. I'm just going to show you these. You can see one thing about gouache is each stroke, the color is slightly changed. And that is true of a few of these brushes. The hairy stroke is just what it says. It's a hairy stroke. Old Clumpy is similar to hairy stroke, but the hairs of the brush are much larger. So you get a little bit more of a gnarly kind of look to it. Sketch Quick is one that I'll use a little bit more later. One reason I like this is it almost looks like when you're drawing on a paper napkin, you, you draw very loosely and sometimes several lines overlap when you're just simply trying to get an idea out on paper. We've also got Wet Bristle and this one's starts off with the color that is current but you can see how it tapers off and becomes more of a blender with the colors that it finds underneath of it. Smear paint is another brush that has a somewhat horsetail like feel but again they're all different and just depending on what kind of stroke you want you'll find each one of these gives you a very different kind of feel. Okay, now let's take a look at the blenders. We'll start here. Puller has a rather granular kind of look to the way that it picks up underlying color. Wispy Blend is another very fine type brush that is good for detail. And finally we get to Smear Blend, which I really like. This one has a very complex look as to the way it mixes up the paint that it finds underneath of it. 
Okay, let's go ahead and we'll save this. And I'm going to save only the brush strokes. I'll say OK. And now we've got our original and we've got our version that has the brush strokes atop it. I'm going to do a little sketch on top of this background. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Particle Shop again. I'm going to select my sketch quick brush here and let's just do a little bit of drawing here. And you can see how I just want to get a very spontaneous look with this. Switch to the sketch wisp brush here just to put a little bit of color. And I'll put a little bit of smear into this. The expression brushes give you a way to create some paint strokes within Photoshop that you can't do with the Photoshop brushes. So it's a great extra bit of kit to have along with Photoshop. You've got basically painter inside Photoshop.